Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. Today we are going to take a very close look at the Compose preview and reveal some functionality I'm pretty sure many of you haven't yet known about. Since I've realized that the Compose preview, which was initially quite unstable, has improved quite a bit over time and I found myself using it more and more. So let's see how we can take this to its limits to really use its full potential. And for that I just prepared a little Android Studio project here with a custom button which has one outlined mode and one filled mode and I changed the shape of the button so that we just have something to preview here and to experiment with. And the first thing I want you to do is to go to your Gradle scripts and open your Gradle app file. Then scroll down and make sure that you are using the latest Compose bomb version, so Bill of Materials. We can do that by removing this version and then hitting Control and Space and it will autofill the latest version. Make sure to use this same version or a later one. Click Sync Now because that gives us more functionality for a preview, which comes from this UI tooling dependency. If that sync is successful and we go back, let's take a look and start from the very basics of what we can do with the preview. First of all, if you have a composable and you want to preview that without having to launch it on your real device, you can just do that with Prev. So that is, an, is a template, a live template in Android Studio that is already uh, there by default. We can hit enter and we can then have our preview that we define here. So custom button preview, for example. Each preview is in the end just a composable function, which is in addition annotated with preview. Surprise, surprise. And in here, what you now want to do is you want to put in your theme, which in this case is compose preview theme. And in there, you just put in the composable you want to preview that worked with whole screens, that works with a single component. So whatever you want to preview, in this case, just a single button. And then we can add some sample data here. For example, hello world, or the title. Let's say we don't want to have an outline button in this case. And our on click function can just be empty because we're not really responding, or we don't really need to respond to clicks here in our preview. Once we did that, we can toggle the preview by going to this little split tab here in the top right, clicking that, and then we need to build and refresh so that we actually see the preview, and Android Studio knows what we want to preview. And there we go. That is the most simple form of our Compose preview. We have a simple Hello World text as a button, and from now on, if we change the parameters here, for example, is outline from false to true, then that will also change in real time here in our preview. So you can see we now have an outline button. And that is one main purpose of the preview, of course, that while we build something, we can see what we are actually building. But an additional big use case of the preview is to also be able to inspect different variants of devices, of screen sizes, of font scaling, of colors. So we can see on one place how our component, our composable, actually looks like on various different configurations. Because that is something we can easily test with emulators or with real devices, because we would need to spin up tons of different devices with tons of different settings, and that would take a lot of time, which we don't have. So we want to speed that up by using the Compose Preview. And the first few basic ways to configure a preview we can do with the preview annotation itself because we can pass a bunch of parameters here. If we hit Command P, then we could give our preview a name, we could assign it to a group. Um, I will focus on the more important ones here. So for example, the width DP. So we can assign a width of the screen size we want to have our preview on, for example, 300 dp and you can see our button fills the whole width now and is now a little bit wider. We can do the same with our height, 300 dp, let's say we have a squared screen and then our button will also be a square in this case. If we use these metrics, then our component will be forced to actually fulfill these dimensions, which it wouldn't do by default because there is no fill max size modifier here in any of these buttons. If we want to preview it on a real screen, on a real device, we can get rid of that and instead do uh, show system UI and set that to true. Then we will actually see our button shown on a real device. And as you can see, now it's also not square anymore because it has the real dimensions it will also have on a real device. So let's see what other parameters we have here to configure our preview. On one hand, if we hit Command P again, you can see we have the locales. So if you have an app that supports multiple languages, then you can also define the language your preview should be in. So in this case, you would just specify the country code, for example, DE for German. In this case, I don't have any German strings defined, uh, but if you would have that, then the strings would also reflect in the preview in the language you choose here. You can also choose the font scale and set that to 2F, for example. So if there is a user 
who um, increase the font scale in their in their Android system settings, then you can also see how that would look like. For example, if there are some older people using your app, then it's very likely they are using a, a bigger font size. And if your app targets such people, then it's very important to also test your app on these devices with such a font scaling. So as you can see, if we double this, then also our text size of our button will double. Then there's also the UI mode we can choose. So that uh, reflects whether we are in dark mode or light mode. We can do configuration dot UI mode night yes or UI mode night no. So if we want to be in light mode, then we can choose mode night no. And nothing will change, I think, because we are already in uh, light mode. But if we change that to yes, then you will see that at least our button will change the color to the color it would have on a device that is set to dark theme. Another thing you need all the time when previewing your components is to choose a device, because that is something you will really need in most of the cases, since most apps need to support multiple different screen sizes. And instead of always needing to spin up multiple emulators, one tablet, maybe one desktop emulator and multiple phone emulators with different screen sizes, you can also just use the preview. So you can say devices, and then choose foldable, default desktop, um, a specific Nexus device. For example, if we want to preview our button on tablet, then we choose Nexus 10. You can zoom out a little bit, and then you can see it, it, it's previewed on a tablet screen. Of course, for this button, there's no difference, but if you're uh, previewing an actual screen, then there will be quite some differences for a tablet screen um, compared with a simple mobile screen. But all these are really just the basics of what you can do with the preview. I think they are pretty well known for people who have used the preview before, but there are actually four more so-called preview templates which were previously introduced with Android Studio, which are really cool. So one thing before that is that we can actually have a multi-preview, so we can preview multiple different components in a single preview window, and these templates relate to that. So if we now go ahead and we actually, let's get rid of this, um, Nexus 10, let's also get rid of this show system UI. If we now just take this preview and copy it, paste it, and we name this custom button um, outline preview, for example, and we change the out outline boolean to false for the non-outlined preview, then you can see we have two previews. And if we take a look here, then both are actually shown here in our preview window in both um, outlined and not outlined. So we have one look at our component and we see it in both variants. So that is really just that you can see we can have multiple previews in a single file, which are all shown together here. If you don't see this um, like I do here, then you can uh, change the display mode here from list to grid or even gallery. So grid would just display all different previews in a grid form. If you use gallery, then you need to click through these. So here's one preview and here is the other. So we can click on these and then the corresponding preview gets loaded. I like grid the most because it just shows um, a lot of different previews with uh, yeah, in as little space as possible. And I also want to get rid of this preview again because I want to show you something even cooler. As I already mentioned, most of the times you want to preview your components with different configurations from the devices. So you want to experiment with different font scaling, with different screen sizes, with a uh, light mode, dark theme, with potentially dynamic colors, which have been introduced in the latest Android versions. And it's of course quite a pain to define that many previews for that. So you don't want to copy paste your preview every single time you want to uh, preview a different screen size together with the other screen size. And luckily, Compose now has a solution for that, which is why we updated that dependency. And those are so-called preview templates. So we can, for example, say preview screen sizes. That is an annotation that does not need any parameters. And if we do that, then suddenly we get that preview on all different screen sizes. If we zoom out, you can see that just by adding the single annotation, we see a desktop version. We see our mobile version, our mobile landscape version, and a tablet landscape and a tablet portrait version. So with just adding a single annotation, you get to see all different screen sizes. That is super cool. And we didn't have that before. Another such a template is font scale. So preview font scale will give us your button in all kinds of different 
font sizes. For this button, this of course all looks fine, but if you actually have font sizes on a single screen and you preview that whole screen where multiple texts can actually clash together, then that often doesn't immediately look good. So in that case, you would need to think about is your potential target audience really a target audience that is likely going to increase that font scale? And if so, then you just found an issue in your UI code. Another such template is preview light dark, which I think is self-explanatory. So we just get to see our button in both a light and dark theme. So this is our normal preview. This is light mode, oh, actually, actually dark mode, I think. And this is light mode. And we can also combine these annotations. So if you want to see your uh, button in light and dark theme and also display it in dynamic colors, then we can say preview dynamic colors and just add that annotation. So if we do that, then we just get all these dynamic color buttons in addition to our light and dark theme buttons. So depending on what kind of wallpaper the user has set on their device, the button will then have a different uh, color. So if they have a green background, the button will look like this. If they have an orange like background, it will look like this and so on. And you can just combine all these annotations and with just four lines of code, you can see your component or screen on so many different configurations with just a minimum amount of effort. One thing these preview templates can offer you is if you have some custom parameters. For example, this is outline parameter. Let's say we want to preview our button once with the filled version and once with the outline version, but we don't want to define many previews for that. So in this case, it would just be two previews because we have a Boolean here. But let's say you have some kind of a list or some kind of user entries that have some kind of complex data source behind them. And uh, the UI component doesn't always uh, look exactly the same. And you just want to preview a component with a different inputs. What you can then do is you can define a so-called parameter provider. So you would go ahead here and define a class for your preview. For example, in this case, outline parameter provider, which is a preview parameter provider of type T. So type T would be the type of parameter it should provide, in this case, Boolean. Then we can go in here and override the values sequence here. And here we just need to provide a sequence of all the different parameter values we want to provide to the preview. In this case, it would be false and true. So we, on the one hand, want to have our preview with is outline being equal to false and once with true. And if we now go ahead inside of this previews function signature and we use the annotation preview parameter and refer to our outline parameter provider, double colon class, we can then define the is outlined or is outline boolean here, which compose will now show with is outline being equal to true once and once with it being equal to false. If we now take this parameter, pass it here to our is outline, then you can see that for each preview, so our preview um, components are actually doubled now. And for each preview, we now see two variants of our custom button, once in outlined and once in the filled version for all the dynamic color and all the light and dark theme variants. And of course, having a Boolean here is the most simple form of such a parameter provider. But imagine you have a screen and that screen has a complete uh, the state data class passed to it. Then you can define different variants of that state data class, which you define in the sequence of here, of course, that would be a sequence of your screen UI state. And you could then pass these different variants to your preview like this. And then you just get to see different variants of your screen, depending on what kind of scenario the user is currently in and preview that all at one single place in all different configurations, light theme, dark theme, um, big font scaling, I don't know, different screen sizes. So I think the Compose Pre really improved a lot here. And as the last little tip I want to give you is you always need to take a little bit of care when uh, writing your code that it actually works with a preview because not all composables can be previewed by default because sometimes you just create complex objects inside of these composable functions which the preview can't really construct. A typical example here would be a view model that requires a lot of different constructor arguments. So maybe a use case, maybe a repository, maybe some other kind of parameters in the constructor and the preview isn't really a, a full functional app which can completely run your source code maybe also use dagger hill to inject dependencies in the view model so at this point it will fail however we still often need these view models in our code and also kind of need to use these in composables but what i'm saying is 
build your preview, uh, build your composables with the preview in mind. So at the very top level, you can definitely use your review models, but then only pass down the data to the composables that is actually needed. So your composables don't all need a view model reference passed to them. No, they actually just need the state passed down to them. And then they can also propagate events up to the view model, which again is at the top level. That way you keep your screens previewable while still being able to use view models, which we all need in our apps, of course. And sometimes if you really need to work around something in your composable, then you can also make use of the local inspection mode. So that is just something we can access in our composables, local inspection mode dot current, which is a Boolean, as you can see, that will be true if a compose is currently in the preview and it will be false if it's not. So for example, what we could do is wouldn't make any sense here, but if we check this, if local inspection mode at current, if we are in the preview, we want to have a width of our outline button of 3dp and else of 1dp. So then you can see in the preview, we suddenly have a thick outline, but if we would actually launch our app and display such a button, it would still be 1dp, so a thinner border. And in this case, this of course wouldn't make any sense, but sometimes you need to make the preview skip certain parts of your code. And if you just want to quickly preview something, if you quickly want to experiment with something um, without having to set up a specific composable to be previewable, as I mentioned before, then you can make use of this local inspection mode and actually skip certain sections for the preview. And I think Compose really improved a lot here in this preview. I love Compose. And that is also why I took the time to really condense the 20 most deadly mistakes people do with Compose into a single free PDF. So I'm very sure there are at least some mistakes you are currently making in your Compose code, which you are not aware of, which I've explained in this PDF, so you don't need to make them again. To get this free PDF, you can just check the first link in this video's description. Just enter your email, first name, and then I will send you the PDF link via email. Other than that, thanks so much for watching this video. I will see you back in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.